Hello, I'm MPX Toy Cat, and we have just a few months remaining until Minecraft 1.21 comes out, so I appreciate if Mojang doesn't have much time, but that's why I've made this video short and to the point. There are three big categories of feedback I'd like to give about 1.21, and we're going to start with the Trial Chambers, the first of these three, and there are lots of positive things I'd like to say about this, and indeed the update as a whole, such as how much easier slime farming is getting, and the fun ways that'll be done, but this video is meant to be about constructive feedback, and so that is mostly what I'll be piling on, starting with the first, which is that trial chambers are great, but I think they're still slightly too hard to find. This is something which kind of makes sense, it's a rare structure, until you realize that lots of the things you'll want from this are going to require multiple trial chambers, and so for this reason, I think it would be a fun addition if while breaking pots around this place, you might be able to find a trial chamber map. This would be a really handy feature by itself that would allow you to find the next trial chamber from this one, and it would still require some searching and digging down and all the fun stuff, but I think it would make the process just a little bit more fun. Speaking of more fun, when you drink an ominous bottle, as we know, it turns all of the nearby spawners into ominous spawners. This is almost meant to be the boss fight of the trial chambers, but it doesn't have a purple bar right now, like the raid does, and I think if the raid is going to have a boss bar, so too should an ominous spawner. It would really help knowing there's just a single mob around somewhere, and that always seems to be in my experience, and so either that final mob should come fight you, or there should be a little boss bar just so you know, find the last spider, and you'll get that potential thing. By the way, I think the ominous, uh, you know, existence right now very much is a little bit RNG heavy. You need RNG to get these ominous bottles to begin with, and then you need RNG to maybe get one of these ominous trial keys, uh, one of these right here, and then you need RNG when you use this on an ominous spawner to potentially get whatever you're looking for. I think too many layers of this in a row don't feel very good. Randomness should be, you know, it's fun when you do it one off, but when you do it too many times in a row, it starts to feel like, yep, just another trial chambers here on the ground. Maybe the mace is worth being that level of random, but I think that feels unfair because you might get it on your first, you might get it on your 400th. There, it'd be nice if there was a way to make that more consistent because unlike trims, it's not just here to make you look better. The mace is in fact meant to be a powerful weapon and so there should be a somewhat consistent way to get it. I think a great way would be making your tr ominous trial key potentially craftable into nine trial keys or potentially the other way around. This would be really fun if you've got lots of trial keys but you really don't want them to use them for another chance at that ominous uh, spawner, and indeed for another chance at that mace, if that's what you want. Speaking of what you want, can I talk about the ominous bottle for a second? Because one of the weird things about the Java version of the game is it doesn't show you what enchantments are on your weapon, or indeed the level of your potion, or anything like that, and so can you tell me what level of ominous bottle this is, which I have in my hand right now? The level of this is meant to be important, that's why there's five of them, but there's no way that I can see that you can do this, you have to hover over it just like this. This is something that could be easily fixed with the tooltip being better, or even if the texture just said one through five on the thing itself, so you could easily spot what you'd gotten without having to leave combat and put your inventory right on the screen like this. That is, I think, a very good one, but you know, speaking of leaving combat, I think we should do the exact opposite and jump right into it, because jumping into combat is something you'll reasonably want to do after this update, and you might immediately say, yes, finally Toycat's gonna talk about the mace, it's ridiculously overpowered, and when you see clips like this one from Speedrunner Feinberg, who managed to use, with no elytra whatsoever, uh, this single technique of windburst to kill the wither. It is insane to say that you don't need to nerf a weapon that's this powerful, but I'm actually going to take the contrary position and say no. Actually, this is one of the better speedrunners in the world, and if you can use a tool to a very powerful extent, it doesn't mean it's overpowered, because most people can't bring it that high. In fact, this just says it has a high skill ceiling, which will encourage people to get better at Minecraft, which is good, in my opinion. I think too many of the flaws in Minecraft are in things becoming too easy to get, such as with mending, and although I would love to talk about, uh, you know, updating things like mending, they're looking for feedback on 1.21, and so let's talk firstly about the mace. The mace has a really fun new enchantment, if you haven't seen it yet, it's called Breach, and it is the ability to go through armor, and so if I summon myself a zombie right here, you can see how despite this mace doing less damage than say an axe, if I just get a few decent hits with Breach on, he is dead despite all of that armor he's holding, because I can breach right through it. However, something really weird you can't do is put breach on an axe. To me, breach feels like an enchantment that perfectly fits the axe, and funnily enough, I was in creative mode when I first tried this and thought, oh, you actually can put breach on axes, and even pickaxes, which I also think is a good fit. I think that Minecraft should say that there is a sword and a sword type weapon, which is more efficient and better at dealing damage, the tridents in this category too, and then it should have weapons which are the heavy artillery for when you're willing to go a little bit slower 
or more niche, but willing to do more damage in exchange. The axe should be, honestly, I could argue that breach should be axe only, but I think the axe should at least have access to breach, while the mace should be much better at full damage or this wind burst. And honestly, I would even say the mace should do more unique niche things. So first of all, I want to talk about density. Density is just a buff to the mace. There's no reason not to have it right now. And although you could argue that's true for almost any enchantment, usually with enchantments, there is a choice to be made, but you just put density on anyone you can. And the better the density, the more damage you'll deal. What if every level of density you put on a mace lowered its base damage to increase its falling damage? I think that would be an interesting trade-off. You might have to make it a curse to make it sound like it's, uh, you know, kind of balanced in that way. But I do think that density should have some downside. Or if we want to make, because, you know, the whole point of the mace is that you fall from the sky. You risk death in exchange for massive damage. What if we did something even similar to this with your health in Minecraft? As your health bar goes down, maybe the mace should deal more damage. I think this could be a really decent enchantment, but also it could be a part of the mace by itself too. The mace should be encouraging you to do risky things, you know, high risk, high reward. And I think that right now risking falling is kind of big, but what if it could also be a risk to you for other things? I think this would be great personally, and maybe you agree. Also, <laughs> look how badly we damaged him there. Uh, absolutely insane what you can do. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think uh, the, the last thing I'd like to say about combat with, uh, when, with regards to 1.21 is the fact that obviously there are lots of great things they're doing with combat here, but one of the things that they've missed the beat on is this ominous bottle, which is a stackable potion. You can see it's got the little cork in the bottle there, which you can drink as many times as you like from one slot. So why is it that when I have a potion of leaping, I can't combine these into one slot? Make it make sense, Mojang. Why can this stack, but these can't? I know that there was years ago a combat update, which apparently Mojang is choosing not to acknowledge. And if you're not going to implement the all of that update, why not take the very best parts of it and implement it there? I personally think that everything in the combat update should just come into 1.21 personally, but if you're going to take a cautious view, then implement the good bits now and ignore the bad bits. That is the point of feedback, right? To work out the best things and ignore the bad things. Or maybe I'm crazy personally. With that said though, if stackable potions aren't coming to the game, then maybe instead Mojang should focus on the polish of 1.21, something they are no doubt doing because they can confirmed that the ominous spawners were the last feature in 1.21 and so the next few months will mostly be bug fixing and polish. Bug fixing is something non-controversial we can say they should do regardless but when it comes to polish here are the things I think they should do. First things first a new music disc. You'd be surprised at how much a music disc contributes emotionally to reasons to go to a new structure but also the memory of an update. Pig step for 1.16 adds to its legendariness and I think that relic will add to 1.20 in a big way in the same way that 5 does for 1.19. Having a soundtrack to a structure does help with people's memory and with people's appreciation of an update. Also, speaking of appreciation, they added a lot of new potions and potion particles. Look at all these fun skulls I get with the Omnus potions and the slightly less annoying kind of burning effects I get with the oozing potion right here. However, or sorry, with the infested potion I get right here. However, when you drink any other potion, even though they've kind of gone through and made these potion particles a little less annoying, they're still horrifically covering your screen. The most annoying one to me are the sight-based ones, like night vision. If you don't use a command to turn off these particles, your screen just gets covered in this weird pink, purple, gray mist. Why is this happening to me? It totally shouldn't be. It's something Mojang should have worked out by now. I see it as there are three solutions. Either you can make potion particles turn offable in the settings, or you could make them turn off just for the end user, so I would know where they are, or relegate them to a corner of the screen at least. I think seeing them in the top right there, and seeing them in your inventory if you're playing Minecraft Java, I think that is enough of a place for me to know when I have these effects. Why do I need to have it covering my screen? That should be for everyone else to see, not for me. I don't know why I need to suffer when I drink a potion. Just like how I think uh, people don't need to suffer if they only enjoy updates. You know, let's be honest, lots of people are going to love the combat side of this update, the combat adventures if you really will. However, there, it, there needs to be something in this update for chill players. People like farming sugarcane and sheep all day long having Minecraft be that chill, relaxed game. And although a lot of those players will eventually come check out the Trial Chambers, having something that makes them feel like they don't need to, but instead can choose to, is something that will make a huge difference in my opinion. What could this be? Well, rapid fire ideas. How about a haste potion? 
This could give a bit of a mining boost for everyone, uh, but also you could have a piece of armor uh, that you know maybe gives you a utility ability. Uh, your mobility humility could be reduced with an enchantment which goes on your shoes. That could be real fun. Uh, perhaps it could reduce your hunger or just give people the ability to auto smelt when mining or to counteract the fact that you find so much copper here in the trial chambers. For people who don't find them, give them the ability to smelt up their blocks of raw copper. It wouldn't be OP. You'd still have to mine all of the copper but you'd be able to smelt it just a bit faster so you could get all of these new blocks. Something to allow people to actually enjoy these features would go a long way in my opinion. And so I would say that inclusivity is an easy thing to say when you're talking about the politically right types of it, but actual inclusivity in terms of Minecraft update is hard. If they were going to release a Minecraft, I think this is a great update for someone who likes late game content, i.e. me, uh, but if they were going to do the exact opposite, release some content update where it was all early game, just 21 mobs that didn't really do anything beyond the surface, I would be disappointed and I would hope that someone would talk to Mojang and they would see their senses about maybe adding stuff for me too and that is what I think they should hopefully do with this and at the very least if you want to do something just uh, you fun with the major feature of this update, make the mace good for mining if you enchant it in a certain way, make it good for mining the block behind the one you mine or mining certain types of blocks, there are lots of fun things that you could do and that is why inclusivity should be true. However with that said I hope this video has enchanted you or indeed inspired you in some way let me know your thoughts and your ideas down below like favorite subscribe or all of the other things that you do to videos you like and hopefully you found this video to be useful to you i have vaguely mentioned inclusivity here but in being inclusive to wide audiences with lots of different views is something i try to do a lot here on this channel uh you know because of all the kind of errors we've gone through here and one of the things we've been doing recently is including new content for members only so consider becoming an ibx toy cat channel member to access a few videos that are only found right there. Uh, I'd appreciate it a lot. It supports the channel during uh, the trying times that you often find on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you tomorrow. We'll talk about the last 1.21 feature. It'll be great. Goodbye.